Some pets are full of energy and love to play. Others enjoy nothing more than a nice long nap. I got two of those. Bruiser <laughs> loves to nap. Blue loves to play. But whatever the case, when you notice something a little off, especially with their ability to get around and be themselves, it's best you get some professional advice. And Dr. Kevin P. Benjamino is a board-certified specialist for surgery at Affiliated Veterinary Specialists. He's joining me right now. We're going to talk about some elbow issues pets may experience. But first, for those of us, uh, for those anybody out there who hasn't been yeah. watching us, you guys are on all the time with us. Uh, tell us about we Affiliated Veterinary Specialists. Yeah, we, we've actually we've been in the area for about 20 years. We have four different locations, uh, both two in Jacksonville, one in well, Orange Park, Southside in Jacksonville, Daytona Beach, Gainesville, and uh, we're kind of a, we're a group of specialists, uh, veterinary specialists, and in multiple different disciplines that uh, you know, can help you out when you guys are in a crisis, and things that you know your regular vet may not feel comfortable dealing with. Uh, we're always there. Yeah, you, you've uh, you've helped uh, you helped brew out. My dog um, had swallowed something he wasn't supposed oh, no. to that didn't get through him, and you guys were uh, nice enough to help out along with the Jack Humane yeah. Society. Um, but it was it was such a, a blessing yeah. to have you guys. And so one of the things, real quick, it says <coughs> it in the name specialist, mm -hmm. but um, what makes you guys different is don't just show up here to get your rabies vaccine. Right. We probably don't have any of those no. <laughs> in our hospitals. No. So um, so we don't do the typical vaccinations, flea preventative, those types of things, but. Um, you know, where for me, I do kind of specialized surgeries, both orthopedic and soft tissue. And you know, kind of differentiation, we, you know, there is a kind of more study after vet school um, that we go through. For me, it was about five years after vet school. So Just kept on going and going. Yeah. And then uh, board examinations and all that. Just like on the human side, very yeah. similar. No, you can see on, on the screen there, some of these, these are not your standard uh, standard checkups and stuff, but um, yeah. today, yeah. <clears throat> and I love yeah. it, we always talk about something different that somebody out there may be uh, having this with their pet. We're talking about yeah. uh, elbow dysplasia. Yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, so dogs do have elbows. Yeah. <laughs> so front legs are elbows, these joints, um, kind of similar to us, yeah. although for them, they're walking on them all the time. Um, and they have knees, and that's a total different dis discussion. Right. I think I was here talking about hips before. Um, and so elbow dysplasia really means, you know, this, the term dysplasia is just an abnormality in development and it, it is a hereditary type of an issue uh, for them. And um, <clears throat> what it, when you look at the bones themselves, and we'll see in some of the x-rays, elbow joint is kind of complex, made up of three different bones, the humerus or the upper bone, the radius, kind of the front part of your forearm, same bone structure as people, and then the ulna or the point of the elbow and the back part. And so it's really it's necessary for those bones to grow symmetrically together and when we see changes with that then we kind of have a term called elbow dysplasia. And it, it says there, on, it showed you on the screen, it's, it's usually with, with larger dogs with the amount of weight yeah. carrying. And yeah, so I mean we, the common breeds, and my own dog has it, a golden retriever who was on a white, long time ago, I brought him on once. Um, so your golden retrievers, your Labradors, some of the other hunting breeds. So it's usually going to be the bigger dogs, although we do see it from time to time on the uh, small guys too. So let's talk about uh, anybody out there, what are the signs that a pet owner should be looking yeah. for? The biggest thing you're going to see, and it's usually going to be early on, you know, so a person with a Labrador puppy six months of age, or you know, we, we'll see, start seeing signs between probably like six months and about two years of age, because it's something as they're developing that you're going to see it. Usually it's limping. You know, a lot of times at first it's starting just intermittent limping where an owner might say, hey, uh, they were out running around and they came back, yeah. you know, kind of limping on favoring one leg or the other or both legs. And it usually gets progressively worse. It can be worse after they're resting or after extreme activity, but you're, the owner is usually going to notice that limping. All right, so uh, <coughs> we got uh, a couple mm -hmm. minutes left. <clears throat> so how do you, you, you diagnose yeah. it? Obviously they come in and think that, but you diagnose it through CAT scans, yeah. through x-rays? Yeah, so we've gotten a little bit fancy on it. <laughs> so we've, you know, physical exam to me is always goes back to, if I'm sus suspicious of it, and it's probably what's going on. Uh, so physical exam is a big thing. X-rays, we can see later changes with the elbow because you're gonna see arthritis. And then in some cases where we may not see changes on x-rays, a CT scan gives us really detailed looks, yeah. uh, a look at the elbow. Uh, and then we go into part of surgical treatment, but also diagnosis is elbow arthroscopy, which is really like a person uh, sticking a camera into the joint. This is an x-ray, <clears throat> and it might not show up quite on TV, but there's some early changes. This is my own dog. 
Um, wow. So, uh, and there's some little bone spurs at the back part um, <clears throat> of the elbow. Uh, and the bottom arrow is pointing to where there should be a little point that's normal where it's lacking. And so those are, this is early changes. This was at six months so of that's age. That's early. And then, so you've diagnosed it and then mm -hmm. uh, with, we've got a little time left as far as the treatment. Yeah. It, so it's, these are treatable. The, that's what I want to get out there it, to people. What It's treatable, right? It, it's treatable, but I tell owners because it's hereditary and progressive, we never give them a normal elbow. <clears throat> and so it's always going to be a lifelong of, of some type of therapy. Uh, we usually go down the path of arthroscopy, which is a scope camera, and there's things that we can remove in there to make them feel better. Yeah. Um, they'll create little processes or little fractured off pieces that we remove, um, but long term will be um, kind of medical management, <clears throat> non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, um, different types of glucosamine chondroitin, yeah. just like a person would take rehabilitation that we can incorporate. I know AVS has, we have two docs in rehab. And so most of them, we usually give about an 80% success rate with treatment. Um, and 20% we may need more therapy and or surgery long term. Yeah, um, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I, when I talk to you guys and I talk to, we have doctors on too, yeah. you're saying all the same stuff. It's amazing yeah. the technology that you guys are using. Very on similar equipment, yeah. Really, <laughs> so, really lucky to have you guys here yeah. in town. Well, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. So, uh, and time. there's so much stuff to you can talk to affiliated veterinary specialists um, and get more information. But uh, we want to thank you guys for being here and Very thank welcome. them for making this segment possible. And for more information, visit avspethospitals.com. You can call the Jacksonville office at 904-646-1287 or call the Orange Park office at 904-278-0287. All right, he's full of.